this video is about acids and bases. It's about different types of acids and bases, strength of acid, acids and bases, and the pH scale. Uh, pH calculations and other calculations will be on the next video. So acids and bases, a couple of different properties with them. For acids, they're going to taste sour, so that's things like lemons um, taste sour, or acidic items that taste sour. They contain H3O+, which is a hydronium ion, or a hydrogen ion, which is H+. Plus. They're going to react with the metal to form hydrogen gas. They react with bases to form a salt plus water. They are electrolytes, so they can conduct electricity. And they have a pH less than 7. Some examples would be vinegar, milk, soda, apples, and other citrus fruits. We have bases. Bases are going to taste bitter. So if you ever had your mouth washed out with soap or decided to try it, or if you got soap in your mouth in the shower, um, that's going to taste bitter because it's a base. They also feel slippery. Again, soap feels slippery. Um, laundry detergent especially makes your hands kind of slippery. Um, they're also electrolytes. They, again, they conduct electricity. They contain OH negative, which is your hydroxide ion, except for ammonia. Ammonia is NH3, which is also a base. And then bases are going to have a pH greater than 7. Some examples are ammonia, soap, and laundry detergent. You can find more information about properties in your textbook as well in the introductory worksheet. Okay, different types of acids and bases. We have the Arrhenius, A-R-R-H-E-N-I-U-S. These are going to be in aqueous solutions. So an Arrhenius acid is going to form a hydronium ion, which is that H3O+. An example would be hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus water, going to yield H3O+, so hydronium ion, plus Cl-, which is your chloride ion. Your hydrogen is going from the HCl to the water. And that's where the hydronium ion is coming from. Bases, so Arrhenius bases, are going to form hydroxide ions, which is your OH minus. Here you have ammonia plus water. The water is going to have the, um, or the ammonia is going to take up the hydrogen ion. It's going to move, therefore, the, it's going to become ammonia plus hydroxide ions. Our second type is a bronsted lori. They have acids and bases as well. An acid and a bronsted lori acid is going to be a proton or an H plus donor, so a hydro, uh, hydrogen ion donor. A base is going to be a proton, H plus, hydrogen ion acceptor. We also have conjugate acid and base pairs. These are two substances that are related by the loss or gain of a hydrogen ion. So some examples of these. You have HCl plus H2O, or hydrochloric acid plus water, is going to yield your hydronium ion plus chlorine, or chloride ions. Your hydrochloric acid is going to donate that hydrogen to the water, which is going to cause your hydrochloric acid, because the proton donor, to be the acid. Your water, because it accepts the proton, is going to be your base. Okay. Your hydrochloric acid pairs with your chloride ion because for each one they need to be related by the loss or gain of an electron. When hydrochloric acid loses that hydrogen ion, it becomes the chloride ion, and that's its conjugate base. Your water, when it gains the hydrogen ion, it becomes H3O+, which is the conjugate acid because it now has the hydrogen ion. Okay. They have the pair across the yield sign. Another example is ammonia plus water. Ammonia is NH3, water H2O. This time water is going to donate its hydrogen ion to ammonia. Therefore water is going to be the acid and ammonia is going to be the base because the base wants to accept the proton. This yields ammonium NH4 plus and hydroxide ions which is OH minus. So we need to have our acid-base conjugate pairs. Well, our ammonia is going to gain that electron and become ammonium. 
Therefore, if this is the base, it has a conjugate acid. Oops. This should be in front of it. So ammonia is going to become ammonia. Therefore, it has the base, will have its conjugate acid. Water, because it um, donates the proton, is going to become hydroxide, and therefore that is its conjugate base. Okay. Notice that water is either a base or an acid that's amphoteric. And this just means that it can be either an acid or a base. That's one of your vocab words on the front of your packets. Okay. Try a couple of examples here. I want you to give me the conjugate base of HF, of H3PO4, and of H3O+. Plus. I want you to say the conjugate base for each and name what you're starting with. So you should have got F minus H2PO4 and H2O. Next, go ahead and give the conjugate acid for Br minus HSO4 and CO3 minus 2. Once you've done that, go ahead and give their names. You should have got HBr, H2SO4, and HCO3 minus. the strength of acids and bases. We can have strong acids and bases or weak acids and bases. Strong acids and bases will abbreviate as SA or SB, S for strong. Strong acids and bases are going to be 100% ionized in water or 100% dissociated in water. And they're going to be strong electrolytes. So because their dissociation is so high, they're going to have the most amount of ions in solution. So they're going to be able to conduct electricity well. Some examples of strong acids are hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, bromic acid, iodic acid, and chloric acid. Strong bases include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Again, you should be able to know all of these. You have all of your polyatomics on your sheet. It's just a matter of understanding how to name them. And that was one of the worksheets we'll go over. Weak acids and bases are abbreviated WA or WB. These do not fully dissociate in water or ionize in water. They're a weak electrolytes. Some examples of weak acid is HF. HC2H3O2, or acetic acid, H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid, H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, and HCN. Okay. Weak bases are going to be NH3, or ammonia is another example of a weak base.